Welcome everyone, we are the Robotics and Perception Group, we're from the University of Zurich and at the Robotics and Perception Group we make robots and especially software for robots to use them in search and rescue missions. Now why do we want to do that? Well basically they can do things for us that we cannot do. So this is a perfect example, it's a picture from Fukushima, you all know that. And you can imagine there are a lot of dangerous areas where humans cannot go in. But it's very important that we know what is going on in there, such that we can take actions and prevent further damage. So we want our, water, uh, our robots to do that. Now, how can the robots help? Well, they can do certain tasks for us. Some of them are listed here, and you can think of using a flying robot to do those tasks. Well, the flying robot, it has this capability to provide this bird-eye view, which is perfect for mapping, for instance, or monitoring the operation from the air. But when it comes to carrying a payload into that area or manipulating something, it might not be the best choice. So we could use a ground robot, and you can see that it basically has complementary capabilities. Uh, it, it does not have this great overview, but it's very well suited for manual tasks, such as removing an obstacle, for instance, or carrying a payload. So now, what if we were to combine those two robots in one single system? Well, basically, we get a system that has all the capabilities that we need to solve these tasks. And the key word to that is collaboration. And this is exactly what we want to demonstrate right now. So we set up this mock-up disaster site. We randomly placed some obstacles in the way. And right now we want to figure out what is going on. Uh, so we send out a flying robot, a quad rotor, to collect or get a map for us. So right now we tell the quad rotor how large the area is that we want to cover and that we want to get a map of. And right now, we send it on its mission, and it flies fully autonomously. And while we, and you can see that our operator is not doing anything or touching anything anymore. And while we're getting a map, maybe we detect someone that needs help in an area and that we cannot reach ourselves. And in fact, there is someone that needs help. It looks like this. You can see it on the ground over there. And what happens if someone needs help, but we cannot reach that certain someone? Well. We can bring in this first aid package, which we cannot deliver with the flying robot, but we can do so with the ground robot. Now you can imagine we're indoors right now, uh, so we cannot use GPS to stabilize this quad rotor. And you can see that there is no motion capture system installed here. So how does that thing fly? Well, the quad rotor has a single camera which is looking downwards and the view from the quad rotor typically looks something like this. And you can see those green points in the image. These are the points we extract in every image that we get. These are points with a lot of contrast that are easy to, de to detect. And then we compare the points in two consecutive images and from that we can compute how the quad rotor has moved in the time between the two images. So right now the quad rotor is done covering all this area and getting a map so we compute a mission for the ground robot to reach that target location. Such a mission could look something like this. In, in yellow and black you see the obstacles we placed. It's not the actual scene here. Uh, we computed a path for the ground robot to go. We could detected the target location in red and we also identified obstacles that we need to remove on the way. So right now the quad rotor is guiding the ground robot on its mission and it tells it what to do. So right now we told it to remove that obstacle in order to pass through this gap and reach a target location. So the ground robot grasps it and puts it aside. And again, those two robots are operating fully autonomously. We have no interaction of us anymore. Now it's also interesting to note that the ground robot does not know the overall, the global map of this area. And that's why the quad rotor is following it, it all the time. The quad rotor has the great overview, it can observe and it knows the map and it can always command the ground robot what to do next. So right now the ground robot has reached the target location and is ready to deliver this first aid package, which it's doing right now. We could deliver the, the first aid package successfully, mission accomplished for our robots. 
so we bring the flying robot back. And now I hope that with this demonstration we could convince you that the collaboration of two very different robots is actually a promising concept when it comes to very difficult missions where one single robot might not have all the capabilities it takes to, to succeed. Thank you for your attention.